What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you a new way to draw in perspective. Today I'm going to show you how to draw in five point perspective and actually it has many names. It may be referred to as fish lens or whatever else lens perspective but I personally am going to call it telescope lens because by the end of the drawing when you think about it it kind of looks like you're looking through a telescope and then whatever drawing here would be the subject. So call it what you may, I'm going to call it telescope lens, but it really is called five point perspective. So I'm going to keep it simple for you guys and show you guys how to draw basic shapes in this video. But in terms of a guide, you're going to need a circle guide that looks something like this. And since it's five point perspective, there's going to be five vanishing points. And I'm about to show you where they are. So you have a vanishing point here at the top and the bottom. And then you have another one here another one there so top bottom left and right of this circle and you may notice that the lines coming from these four vanishing points are curved so it kind of ties into the contours of the actual circle and then the last vanishing point will be right here in the center so with this fifth vanishing point there's only going to be straight lines coming from this point and this point only so when I create these shapes we're going to turn them into 3d shapes and we're going to use this fifth vanishing point to do that but going back to the guide I did find this online and I will put a link down in the description so you can get one for yourself if you want to follow along with this video so I'm going to zoom in on one corner so we can begin drawing in five point perspective so let's go so when you think about it this entire guide looks kind of like a disco ball and when you look closely at a disco ball you can see that it's made up of a bunch of little tiny squares and those little tiny squares and rectangles, matter of fact, they can actually help you draw basic shapes. So let me show you. So in this area that I zoomed in on, we're going to begin drawing a square. So as we already know, or probably should know, that a square has four equal sides. So when we make a square, we're actually going to pick a point anywhere. So I'm going to pick right here is a good spot. So I'm going to draw a circle there. And then I'm going to go up. One, two, three, four, five, five spaces. And then I'm also going to go over five spaces. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And now the rest is easy. So all we got to do is go up five spaces again and over. So we can finish making the square. So this may look more so like a rectangle more than a square, but that's because this type of perspective is curved linear, which means it focuses on a lot of curved lines like I mentioned before. So this really is a square, but the kind of perspective that we're drawing it at will make it look less like a square. And the same goes for all other shapes. So going back to the drawing, I'm going to make dots on each corner of the square. I'm going to make them visible at least like so and then I'm going to go in with my ruler and then I'm going to connect each of these points with this fifth vanishing point Okay, so there is our 3D square. Now, since we drew all these lines going towards this vanishing point, we can pick a stopping point. So I'm going to use one of these curved linear lines over here. And that's going to be my stopping point. And now since we got a point right here that it lies on, we can actually use this point to help us draw the other end. or at least the bottom base, if that makes sense. Okay. And now we can erase all these extra guidelines. And now we can make that into a cube. So I'm gonna get rid of this line as well. So 
So real quick, I'm just gonna apply ink to the paper so you can see it better. Okay, now let's zoom out just a little bit. All right, and now you can see that we turned a basic square into a 3D shape, a cube. But to the untrained eye, it won't look like a cube unless you understand this kind of perspective. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transition to this side of the circle and begin to show you how to draw a triangle. So let's go. Okay, so when drawing a triangle, I like to start out with a square base. Similar to what we did over here, but we're gonna do more to that. So first we're gonna start out with drawing the 2D shape. So what I'm gonna do first is pick a point, which is right here. And then when I make the square, I'm gonna make the length and the height the same number. So when I'm drawing a triangle, but I wanna start out with a square, I like to make the length and the height an even number. And I'll show you why in a second. So let's go up and let's say, let's use the number six, that's an even number. So right now I went to three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna go over six as well. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Go down six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then complete it all. Okay. Okay, so now that we got our square, we're gonna find the halfway point top and bottom and left and right. So half of six is three, so we're gonna go over three spaces. One, two, and three. Then we're gonna draw a line that splits the square in half. And then the same thing for the height. And then depending on what kind of triangle you wanna draw, I'm gonna draw an equilateral one to make it easy. So I'm gonna make this top base, I'm gonna put a big X right here because that's really what we're gonna be using these red lines for, okay? And then the other two points are defined by the square that we drew at first. So all we gotta do is connect this point with this point and this point with this point and then we pretty much got our triangle. So let me erase these lines right quick. And the reason I'm not using my ruler is because keep in mind this is curved linear. So the square that we drew at first is curved. So now will the uh, sides of the triangle, those will also be curved linear. And then the bottom base. Okay, so now we got this point, this point, and this point. Next step would be to connect each of those with our fifth vanishing point right here. So that we can use our ruler for because again, straight lines come from only this point. which is really easy to do. Okay, so same deal as what we did over here. We're gonna pick a stopping point on this triangle and we can use some of these um, intersecting lines to help us do that. So let's pick a point right about here. And then the base as well is visible, so let's draw that in. And there, we got us a 3D triangle. So let me erase that, apply ink right quick so you can see it better. All right, so now that that's drawn, let me zoom out. And there, by now you should be seeing some depth coming on. Okay, so the next shape that I'm gonna show you how to draw is a circle. So it's pretty much the same process what we did up here, but since a circle doesn't have any sides, it may get confusing because, like I said, with the square, you're probably used to looking at a 2D shape of a circle. So drawing it distorted or warped in a way will make you think, oh, I'm doing this wrong. So let me jump into that so I can show you guys how that works. Okay, so same deal. We're gonna start off with a square as a guide and then the rest should be a no-brainer. So 
we can make this one five again. So one, two, three, four, and five. Well, actually, let's go six. Six. And then one, two, three, four, five, and six. <coughs> and as you get closer to the edge of the circle, that's where most of those curved linear lines really come into play. Because as you notice right here, some of these lines are more straight. But as you go close to the circle, you see how much of a curve it is on the contour. And that's how most of the perspective lines are going to be. Because again, it's like looking through a telescope. And the reason I say that is because when you come down here and you start to see more rectangles than squares, that's when things might get a little confusing. So let's keep going. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then that's another point. All you gotta do is connect it with the top. And there we go. So now that we got our square, let's begin this process. So like we did up here with the triangle, we're gonna find the halfway point, top and bottom, and left and right. Again, half is six is three. So that would be the halfway point there, and there, and then here, and over there. So actually, let me use my red pencil and make X's. So there are our points to help draw a circle, and obviously those four points don't make a circle. But for the purposes of this video, that's what we're going to do. So the way to do that is just uh, kind of eyeball it. So you probably got to rely on perception to make each end of the circle. Of course, it might be a lot easier to do it digitally, but this also works. So now we got half of the circle. So it kind of really relies on trial and error to using these four points because again, it's distorted and whatnot. Okay, and then I gotta turn it. Okay, so let me erase the square now so you guys can see the circle. Now this is possibly the weirdest circle you've probably ever seen, but it's in five point perspective and it's also distorted, so, but it's still a circle either way. Okay, so when we turn this circle into a 3D object, we're actually not gonna use these points. Because a 3D object with a circle base, for example, would be a cylinder. Because here's an example. Let's use this point and connect it with this fifth vanishing point. Now that can be helped to determine the center of the cylinder when we finish drawing it, but that's not really what we're doing. Because that particular point was used to help us find the halfway mark of the square guide that we just erased. So that's why we gotta kinda eyeball which parts of the circle to connect to this vanishing point. So like this area up here seems like a good spot. So we're gonna connect, we're gonna connect the top to the vanishing point. And then the same thing with the bottom. Okay, so now we got us a close enough looking cylinder for now. And the reason I say a close enough cylinder is because we haven't chosen a stopping point yet. So to choose a stopping point, we pretty much gotta mimic this shape. In math, the right word to use would be dilated, which means make it smaller. So all we gotta do is take the portion of this circle that starts here and ends here and mimic that shape somewhere along these lines. So I'm going to do my best here. Okay, so that looks like it's good enough. Might not exactly be perfect, but it's good enough to me. 
So let me erase this, give it some ink, and then come back to you guys. All right, and that's what our cylinder looks like in five point perspective. So now let's go over here and try an organic shape. If you don't know what an organic shape is, it's basically a shape that's not based on math principles. For example, like the square, triangle, circle, those are based off math principles because you gotta worry about uh, diameter, circumference, radius with a circle, base and height with a triangle, um, equal length with a square, and things like that. Organic shapes focus on none of the above. But organic shapes are often curvilinear. So organic shapes are curvilinear, kind of like this guide. And Google says they are similar to those found in nature, like plants, animals, and rocks. Basically anything that's not man-made. So when we draw this organic shape, we're actually not gonna use much of these intersecting points like we did earlier. So really we can just scribble any kind of shape on this guide. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm just gonna make like a, a paint spot. See, so that's an organic shape. And here's more examples of organic shapes right here. So what we're gonna do now is pick a high point on this organic shape. So I'm gonna pick this point up here maybe this point as well and then down here and then also here so actually let me mark that with my red pencil so there's that point that one that point and this one so those are the points that we're gonna connect to this fifth vanishing point so let's take our pencil and our ruler and get to it Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mimic this shape along these lines somewhere. So like from this point to this point, that entire line right there, we're gonna draw a smaller version of it somewhere along here. So I'm gonna do my best because this is an organic shape and as you just saw me do, I went crazy with it. And I forgot to mention that we'll be drawing a smaller version of this shape again, but the reason I didn't say that is because we're not going to draw the entire shape all over again. Just one small portion of it. So it's nothing to be alarmed about. So I'm going to do my best here to mimic this line. And then this one won't be seen because these two shapes are on top of it. All right, so let me grab my eraser, erase that, and sketch it in right quick. All right, so there's that shape. So let me zoom out and show you guys what this entire drawing looks like. So there's the finished shape and I zoomed out so I can show you guys the entire drawing with all the shapes in comparison. So that way you gain some insight on what five point perspective is in case you didn't know what it was before clicking on this video. But when making this video, I made sure to provide some good examples for you guys by using basic shapes plus an organic shape. And so you gain an understanding on what the word curve linear is or curvy linear. And also a cool trick you can do is you can outline this entire circle and then color the outside of that circle black. Here's an example where I did just that and I made it look like it was a telescope lens. So right here is a drawing of a cityscape at a bird's eye view and it looks as if you're looking through a telescope. So that's why the buildings in this drawing look like that. But that is something you can definitely do to make it look like a telescope lens, which is why I called it that. But you know, as an artist, the choice is yours. And sorry about my voice, it's been going lively and mono throughout the video. I don't have strep throat or anything, nor COVID, nor any disease, but it's just my allergies acting up, so nothing serious. But anyway, if you liked the video, or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I can't let a nigga like Pat Kate.